Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Now, a while ago, some of you expressed an interest to find out how I work, kind of behind the scenes um, videos on how I store my stencils, my workstation, my camera setup, and also what's in these drawers behind me. So I thought we'd kick off that little short series of videos with me going through what I keep in these drawers here. So and what I'm going to do is I'll turn the camera around and it may get a little bit shaky because I'm going to have to hold the camera in my hand as I go through each draw. Um, so if you get a little bit seasick, I do apologise. Okay, so this is the draw unit. It's a set of three columns and there's 11 drawers in each. And I do apologise if there is a little bit of a shadow. The window in my room is directly opposite, so there is going to be a little bit of glare on the front and I will be getting in my own shadow just a little bit. So first of all, I've got um, all the drawers labelled up, as you can see here, using my uh, Letra Tag Dymo label maker. So inside these drawers, as you can see, it clearly states um, what kind of things are hidden inside. So this is my Dilution paint drawer. I'll just open that up and there you can see inside there's my Dilutions paint. Um, that's one of the new 2006 colours. I'm still waiting for my um, other ones to... Uh, well, I've got them. They're at the office. I just haven't brought them home yet. But at the back of there, I've also got um, some overspill for some other paints, which you'll see in a second. So these are... Um, the drawers are approximately uh, about a foot deep from front to back. Um, and they're about, about three inches deep. So they're, you know, decent drawers and you can keep, you know, I can stack two of the Dalloway paints up and they don't even come to the top of the drawer. So that's my Dilutions paint. Next drawer down to that is my Indigo Blue paint. So this is Indigo Blue. Um, the English Cottage Artist Acrylic. So they're all in there. As you can see, there's quite a few and it goes on and on and on. These drawers do come out, so I can take them out and take them over to my workstation if I need to. So there's all my indigo blue paints in there and my overspill ones in there. So I have got quite a lot of those indigo blue paints. The next drawer down is my Artiste paints. Now these are from a company called Do Crafts uh, or Design Objectives and their brands are Artiste and they also have Paper Mania. Um, and I think they're just getting into the States at the moment. They're just starting to appear over there. And these are very inexpensive paints. They look about the same size as the Deco Arts Americana kind of ones. Um, and they're probably about the same sort of price. Now, in the UK, I can get one of these for around about, about £1.25 to £1.50, depending where it is. Now, they're about two, is it about two fluid ounces. Yeah, two ounces or 59 millilitres of paint in there. They're great um, paints for just splashing about and they're brilliant for your jelly prints and that kind of stuff because they're very inexpensive and you don't waste a fortune putting really expensive pay, uh, paints onto your jelly plate. So these are my go-to paints. I also use these in classes too. Um, and there's a mixture of mattes and there's a mixture of metallics as well and pearls in there. So that's mother of pearl, that's a pearl pink one. What's that called? Blush, there you go. But most of them are matte um, and they are quite opaque as well. They're not translucent. So they're kind of like my go-to cheapo paints that I use. Um, then I have a drawer full of the Tim Holtz Distress paints and there's one or two of the um, Adirondack paint doll was in there as well. They're the same sort of size, the same sort of thing, and it's all kind of ranger-ish. So that's where I keep all my distress paints in there. And underneath that, I have my Reeves artist paints. Now these, I think, are, um, well, these are more expensive. Um, and I do, I do use them a lot. But when I'm probably going to do something a bit more um, serious than just splashing paint around the page, I tend to go for these ones. And there's some absolute cool colours. Got some brilliant neons in there as well, which I haven't quite used yet. Fluorescent green, fluorescent pinks, blues, that kind of stuff. So that's my Reeves paint. Okay, underneath that I keep my texture paste, or what will fit 
in my texture paste drawer. So there I've got like my golden heavy gloss gel. I've got some rough or some coarse texture paste. That's quite a large tub. Uh, what's in, what does it say how much is in there? Yeah, 500 millilitres, which is quite a sizable, quite heavy one. That's coarse, that's, he that's fine. But I've also got in there glass bead, texture gel, modelling paste, heavy structure gel. There's my Dreamweaver and um, Wendy Vecchi gold embossing paste uh, and some heavy carvable modelling paste. So that's great for heating because it does bubble up really, really nicely. So you do get some nice domed effects on that. So that's where I keep all my modelling and texture pastes. And underneath there, we've got gessos and primers. So I've got indigo blue, black and white gesso. I've got some Dina Wakely black gesso. Um, but my biggest pot of white gesso doesn't fit in there. It's over there on the bookcase. I'll just whip back around. Um, because it just won't fit in. So it sits on the bookcase behind me. So underneath that, I've got dilution sprays don't have many of those because I've gradually been uh, using them up and not replacing them because they're not my favourite product. If I want to make a spritzer spray I will now use acrylic paint because it's permanent and when it's dry they don't come through so there's no movement. So my dilution sprays are slowly being consigned to history. And then underneath that I've got archival ink so I've got my archival inks that I keep in little drawers. And then at the back, behind those, let me see if I can pull the drawer a bit further. I've got my Encore um, Ultimate Metallic ink pads. And obviously I pulled the drawer a little bit too far. But I've got gold, I've got silver, I've got copper, and I've got bronze. And there's a Mento Tuxedo Black Hang in the back there as well. Now these are all from um, Sukuniko those ones. So those are what I call specialist inks um, and they are very metallic uh, and I keep those for special occasions like Christmas and that kind of stuff. So underneath that I've got distress ink. Oh, it says pulling out his distress inks. So distress inks are all in there and um, a couple of minis in there as well that I received um, or picked up. I don't go out my way to buy the minis because I prefer the larger tubs, but they're not in any particular order and I literally just go through them, take out what I want before I start a project. So this is why having everything labelled up isn't a big deal for me because literally I get everything out that I want to use for a project beforehand. Mostly, sometimes I forget that I need something or sometimes I'll get halfway through a project and realise I do need something that I didn't think I did and then I'll have to come back over to the drawers to get it. Um, but that doesn't happen very often. So normally I pick out what I want and take it over to my desk before I start to actually work. I find it's a bit more, um, well, it's easier to handle uh, for me anyway. And bottom drawer, not labelled up, is just some overspill, very, very cheap. Um, again, these are um, Ducraft Artiste. So the same as the Artiste paints, same brand. But these are just very cheap pigment ink pads and they're only like a couple of a couple of pounds and I don't use them very often, which is why they're consigned down there. Now that's not all of my inks. Um, I do have, I'll just turn the camera back around again, I do have um, a stand with all of my stamping up inks on there. Now one of those is empty because I've literally just moved them all around and I normally keep all my stamping up inks, just move that canvas out of the way. There we go. As you can see I've got a lot of the greens, the browns, I've got the blues going into yellows and oranges and then I've got the reds and purples but I've literally rearranged them so I've got this free because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put in some of the archival inks in there so that they're on hand for me to use whenever I want them. So that sits on the bookcase which is behind me there's my little Doctor Who figures there and my paintbrushes and that kind of stuff that I just put in empty jam jars or pickle jars or whatever I've got and I've just decorated them with some 
silly Halloweeny kind of labels. Okay, so back to the drawers. Second column of drawers. Oh, my hands are shaking. All right, okay, so in that top one, I have the big brush, neo color, and gelatos. So in there, I've got my neo colors, my big brush pens and gelato in a little tub there just ready to be taken out. Now as you can see I can just lift these out uh, and take those over to my desk which is just there um, and then I can just drop them back in again. So most of them, and there's a set of metallic ones underneath there that I haven't quite used yet. So everything really is designed for ease of use. I can just grab hold of it and take it wherever I need it. So the next one is stickles, silks and chalk ink. So there you can see I've got um, glitter glues, I've got my silks, I've got some um, mica powders there and hidden in the back I've got some of the Ingvid, Ingvid Balm, I think they are. It looks some of them I've never, never even used. These are the what I call the cat's eye chalk inks. I've got some of those and there's also some rub and buff hidden in the back as well and a few other um, gilding waxes. These are from Creative Expressions which is a company based here in the UK as well. Um, don't use those very often. But there's my silks, so mica powders and um, glitter glues, stickles and also some liquid pearls in there as well. But I don't tend to use those very often for art journaling. These are leftovers from when I did a lot of card making for um, as a hobby also, but also for the business. Um, next one is my pencils and ink tents. Okay, so in here, now all my ink tent pencils are missing at the moment. <laughs> because I've actually got them out. Um, that I'm working on something at the moment. They're actually in my pencil case at the moment so because I'm taking those away with me. Inside this next bit I've got a few Sharpies. Now I've got gold and copper and there's a few Jelly Roll pens and there's some um, Krylon gold and copper um, leafing pens that I use occasionally. And also in there I've got my Derwent Colour Soft colouring pencils. So they're all in there. So again, I can just take those out at any time and just take them over to what my desk and use them. So I've taken them out of their original tin, um, but I haven't thrown the tin away. It's still kicking around somewhere. So that's my pencils and ink tent straw. Next one is sponges and foams. Yep. So I've got my ink blending foams, I've got other sponges for art journaling, paint application. There's makeup applicators there which get used for art journaling and stenciling. Um, and there's an empty one there in case I need to take any away with me. I also keep my um, blending tools in there as well. And there's a few you know, stray ones at the bottom. So that's those. And the next one is uh, let's see, mixed media canvas junk. Okay, this is probably the most interesting drawer I would have thought. In here is my drawer that I keep all of the stuff that I use for my mixed media canvases. This is my treasure drawer. So there's everything in there from, as you can see, wrenches, spanners as we call them, shotgun cartridges, spent, obviously. There's dominoes, there's bits of old electronic equipment, this is the innards of an old webcam, um, old jewellery, there's watch faces, there's metal findings, there's nuts, bolts, washers, wing nuts, you name it, everything. Um, bits and pieces that people send me in happy mail, like these, still haven't got around to using those. Um, but also things that I pick up off the floor as well, broken bits of Lego. There's even a Lego head in here somewhere, there he is. I found on the floor somewhere, so everything has um, some kind of use. I've got old bottle ring pulls, I've got bottle caps in there from bottles of beer, and um, alphabet 
rings from like a label maker which I no longer use I've got a few oh, it's just tons and tons of bits and pieces that I've either picked up or, or been sent or just come across there's an old cake tester in there there's an inline switch from an old lamp I've got little mini bobbins there's bags of stuff that came in happy mail I've got even a label from an old Shivers Regal um, box that I keep with bits of metal findings there's even a lion's head, a mini lion's head knocker in there. Look, I still haven't worked out what I'm going to do with that. But there's all sorts of bits and pieces in there. There's tons and tons of old metal charms, nuts and bolts and all kinds of stuff. And that's everything that I use for my mixed media canvases. Um, so literally nothing goes to waste, nothing gets thrown away and everything has a use. One man's rubbish trash is another man's treasure. And that's certainly what I live by. Okay, so next bit is ephemera bits. So that drawer, literally exactly what it says. It's old, uh, it's, well, things that people sent me in happy mail. It's sheets of board book text. I've got um, papers, I've got um, old checks, I've got old photographs, I've even got a road tax disc that we used to use here in the UK, we don't anymore. There's old photographs, there's doilies, there's cards, some little gems, just all sorts of bits and things, pieces that people have sent me. That came from, I think that actually came from Thomas in San Francisco. Thanks Thomas. Um, and doilies and all sorts of other stuff. There's cabinet cards, there's all kinds of yumminess that I can use um, in the creation of my pages. That's that one. So the next one is tissue and napkins. So in there is my tissue papers that I've been sent or collected. There's napkins that people have sent me or I've collected along. Uh, now I've actually got a pile of napkins here that I need to go through. Four new sets that I need to add to my collection and then decide what I'm going to do with the rest of them. Possibly give them away. And under there I've got rub-ons, stickers and alphabets. So these are chipboards, these are die cuts, letters, um, added tickets, there's, oh, I can say rub-ons, there's the chit-chat stickers, and I've got quite a few sheets of um, die-cut chipboards that I just pop out and use, um, which I'll be using in a canvas, not actually a page, a bit later on, um, over the next week or so, actually depends on if I've already seen it, um, by the time this gets uploaded. So there's all sorts of letters and alphabets and that kind of stuff, but nothing that I've cut from magazines. Um, they're kept somewhere else. So these are all literally um, die cuts, chipboards, stickers and alphabets that I've collected along the way and rub-ons as well. There's also some rub-ons in there too. There's some Tim Holtz ideology ones hiding them on there. Next one we have glues and adhesives exactly what it says glue and adhesive there's 3d silicon gel i've got some slap it on which is like a matte medium but that's a gloss matte medium again from indigo blue i've also got some of their fabric slap it on there's pva there's photo glue um lots of 3d gel glue there's even some crackle accents and i keep my little bottles of glossy accents in here and that's just a, it's not oregano, it's very thick um, woodworking PVA um, that I use occasionally when I'm um, wanting to stick something down, which is a little bit heavier duty. So that's glues and adhesives. The next two bottom ones, it says punches and more punches. So in there, I literally have hand punches, And more punches. Now these are mostly stamping up punches. There's even a punch envelope punch board underneath all that. Um, but these aren't all of my stamping up punches. I do have a board on the wall um, in the craft room in the garage downstairs that's still got the majority of my punches on that board there. They're literally hanging on the wall. Uh, but they've only been brought up as and when I've needed to actually use them. Okay, so on to the next column. And this says stamp press and rockers. 
So that's stamp press and rocker blocks. Some iron that is in there as well, which shouldn't be in. So stamp press and rockers, that's for stamping. To get any impression, you just rock with them. There's a stamp press, there's also a six by six, so one that I need to put back away in there. In fact, let's just grab it and put it back where it's supposed to go. There you go. A place for everything and everything in its place. Oh, my hand is starting to hurt now. Okay, so stamp blocks. Exactly what it says in there. I've got um, acrylic blocks of all different shapes and sizes. I've even got a stamp -a jig a finger -a jig an inka dinka do stamp -a jig The sheet is in there. All different sizes, different types of acrylic block for stamping. Um, some with the uh, cling mount for unmounted rubber stamps and some quite large acrylic blocks too. That's quite a decent size one. So all my acrylic blocks are in there. Next one, glue gun and sticks. Yep, not much in there. Glue gun. And mat making and scrapers. So in my mat making, there's obviously bubble wrap. All different sizes of bubble wrap. There's rather large bubbles in there. And I've also got lots of different things, household items that I use for mat making. There's um, also the Tim Holtz um, Ranger ones, which I don't rate very much. The texture tools, because the sides um, on the edges here interfere and you don't end up getting a clear shape so I actually wanted to take the corners off all of those before I use them again but there you go. Um, so I've got old plastic um, what do you call them Dixie cups or something that we used to use to keep soap on the side of the bath. Yeah very old-fashioned kind of thing but I didn't want to um, I don't use it it's just something that I acquired and I'll just lids and pop tops and that kind of stuff all there for making all different kinds of size circles including um, kitchen roll tubes and um, bits of an old light fitting which I thought was quite good for making marks with so that's that drawer and of course you know, in there I keep my scrap ends of bubble wrap and that kind of thing so let's close that drawer, put the bubble wrap back in later. And then we've got my label maker and washi tape. So this is the label maker that does all the labels on there. Spare tape at the back and my bits of washi tape that, well, my washi tapes that I've picked up uh, that was sent to me with the dicky bow ties on by Cindy Utter. Thank you, Cindy. And this was a um, set of um, washi tapes that were sent to me in Happy Mail. Unfortunately, I normally write the name of who sent it on the top, um, but this was a while ago now, so I can't remember. Sorry. Um, jelly plate. Yep, jelly plate and my brayers. Um, the two silicon mats that I have should be in there, but they've disappeared. I don't know what I've done with them. Um, they're probably still in the garage. And next one, gilding flake and tools. So in there I've got tubs of gilding flake. I've got the cut and dry foam uh, or fat foam. My scoochie for removing it once it's glued down. And just a few different colours of the gilding flake. I've got Yorkshire Dales, there's a copper kettle. Not much of that left now. Um, this one, which is the Winter Dawn, which I've transferred into that larger tub there for use. So that's where I keep my gilding flake materials. So the glue that I use for that, the flitter glue, is in the glue drawer. In the glues and adhesives, which is down here. And should be in there. Oh, I've actually got it out. It's on my desk at the moment, that's why. And then... Uh, 3D foam pads and 3D foam tape. So there's pop dots, foam tape, glue dots, 
all different sizes when I'm wanting to add a little bit of dimension to projects. Again, mostly card making stuff, so it doesn't get used that often these days. Adhesive tapes, double sided sticky tape, foam tape, and the red liner tape, which is the really, really strong stuff for box making and that kind of thing. And there's also some masking tape in there as well for when I'm doing my watercolours and some bog standard um, packing tape, the clear stuff. If I ever need it. Now underneath that it says Halloween stuff. So in there I've got just bits and pieces. There's spiders, plastic spiders, here. Bits of netting, there's some embossing folders that have got Halloween theme to them. I've got some stamps hidden in the bottom. Little vampires and things. I think I picked these up in Michael's when I was over in the States a couple of years ago. They were on sale. It was in um, November. So obviously Halloween was over, so they'd been reduced. So I got the full set. And there's a few actually, uh, other little bits and pieces in there as well. Um, spiders webs. I think there should be an old Martha Stewart set in there as well. Yeah, that's an old Martha Stewart set. So that's Halloween stuff, it's its own little place because it's not to be used every year but I don't want to have it floating about. And then the last drawer in this little one is it says my Big Shot Large Dies. And in there I have my um, large um, Sizzix Big Shot Dies, that's tags, that one's the Gadget Gears, so that's a steampunky one. You can't really see with the lighting in here. Sorry about that, but it's just all black. But that's where I keep all of my big shot, big dies, and my um, what do you call those ones? The the big long ones. That's a film strip frame one. So that does film strips. Useful for um, journal pages, but I've not actually used one in that journal page. And this is an alphabet one. This is the carnival one it's like a circusy kind of I'm trying to focus that so that's the tim holtz alterations one and i think i'm stood on my own light now so that's just an alphabet die has been used occasionally but not very often so there you go so that is pretty much um everything that's in there i am going to be playing with my jelly plate fairly soon so that's why I'm just opening the drawer because I'm going to take that out and just have a quick look at it and decide what I'm going to do with it in a minute. So I hope you enjoyed that little look at what I keep hidden behind the fronts of this drawer unit. So now you know where I store all my bits and pieces that I'm still bringing up from the garage craft room downstairs. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me. I'll see you all again real soon. Bye for now.